I love the Carpenters. They were not shying away from being expressive, being human, being emotional. What I've got, they used to call Most people just don't understand how ahead of their time the Carpenters really were. Their music wasn't supposedly cool at the time, but not only did it do exceptionally well, but it will be known and loved forever. Today, the Carpenters are universally respected. There's some people who think I look like a hippie, that I look wild, or, you know, that we sing rock and roll music just because we have guitar amplifiers. But in their prime, they were dragged as lightweights. And worse, one of America's finest young groups, Nixon flunkies. The Carpenters, ladies and gentlemen. There's other people that think that we're so square, square that they don't believe how we can exist. That's the yeah. Carpenters, all purpose, stand up, one line, or sing a line, line, a line. Carpenters, close to you. That didn't stop brother and sister Richard and Karen from creating some of the most influential sounds of the 1970s. The stats are crazy. At over 100 million units, the Carpenters sell more records than Hendrix, CCR, Sex Pistols, and Leonard Skinner combined. I love, don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? I thought that was phenomenal. I've always thought that was phenomenal. I was a big fan of, of the Carpenters. It was like in my soul. Her singing style was just impeccable. It was perfect. She had that really low voice, and yet here is this chick behind the drums singing. Karen Carpenter was a really great drummer. He had always wanted to be exactly where he is. He had ideas, but I didn't know I could do anything until 16. I got into band to get out of gym. I went over, I picked up a pair of sticks. It was the most natural feeling thing I've ever done. We've never seen anybody like that, even since, that could do what she did. I thought her voice was just brilliant, one of a kind. She didn't sound like everybody else. She sounded only like herself. You talk about the synergy of fate. Look at the Carpenters, they have that voice with that brother songwriter. Richard Carpenter would always take a song and then get on the piano and rearrange it and make it work. I'll say goodbye to love. 1972 no was the turning point. Goodbye to Love was the first pop hit to mash up an easy listening arrangement with a guitar straight out of Sabbath. Well, almost. But if Dylan could go electric, why not the Carpenters? That record did turn a few heads amongst Carpenters fans because, of course, it had a fuzz guitar solo in it. And we got a few letters saying, you sold out. I remember the first time I ever heard that, and I was, it was kind of taken by that. I thought this is cool that they took a guitar and put it into a ballad type of a song like that. This was totally crazy. Nobody had ever done that before. These big power ballads, beautiful ballads with raging guitar souls. I take a tiny bit of credit for it, for being there and playing it, but it wasn't my idea. It was Richard's, and he was always the guy with the great ideas. The sound was coming together, but the story of soft rock had only just begun. Daryl and I worked at A&M. We recorded there. And after the word came out about them signing the Sex Pistols, Karen and I were standing there, and she said, you know, we were the kind of music that made this label. What are they doing? And I said, Karen, they're trying to stay hip. And to them, hip was signing this Sex Pistols thing. And she said, well, I don't think it's right. Right. 